This weight on my shoulders ain't light And I turn to you so I can learn from you I yearn but I hold me back and ooh, Welcome to the Fit for the Kingdom podcast with your hosts Tomas Monikason and Matt Mashevsky. Today we have not got Bede with us. He's up in Auckland driving around, feeling sorry for himself. But um, he would have loved to be here. Yeah, if we crash and burn, it's his fault. <laughs> and it just reminds me of a very famous quote today that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of Dr. Love. Oh, that's kind. <laughs> <laughs> so we have with us today again, little, the first ever blasphemous. guest to be on the pod <laughs> twice. Oh, whoa. Thank you for that. Yes, yeah, a very, very Could great honour. ruin it the first time, try and ruin it the second time. <laughs> Dr. Robert Loretz <laughs> is you. with us again at Manzi Studios. We kind of left on a couple of notes last podcast on true friendship and we wanted to look at that in the context of, of man and wife and marriage and what that exclusivity in that relationship looks like. Um, it's a pretty broad question, but I wanted to get the man and himself being very experienced in the topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who needs to be married to be an expert on everyone else? <laughs> Is that, is that a question? All right, so no. should, we, should we get into it? Yeah. Well, yeah, we're, we're oh, just yeah. So, so last, last podcast we talked yes. a lot about um, true friendship. True friendship. So if you were to define true friendship but within a marital context, what would you say? Right, well. Kind of um, and of course that is always present before marriage. We would hope. Um, <laughs> it's possible that people can get married before their friendships deepened to deep friendship, I guess. But... Um, You'll find so out pretty soon. That would, if, would you say that people should wait until their friendship is at a deep oh, level yes, before of course. getting married? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think people think their friendship is deep mm -hmm. when they get married, even if it's not. As in, um, what I mean by that, not putting down anybody, well, I'm just saying um, you can so enjoy the company of someone and and find each other so helpful and useful and to each other that, that you, you, you start to imagine and even bring in a lot of romance, which is mm -hmm. always trying to find an ideal situation, make everything just a little bit perfect, uh, plan it out so the ambience is right, uh, looks very <laughs> sensitive, it looks very very considerate, very, you know, and mm -hmm. people can imagine that they're, because of these things mm -hmm. and they're swept up in it, um, add to that attraction and all sorts of other things and you can think pretty quickly, you found this amazing right. person for life. Um, and then, um, but in fact, what you what you could have theoretically is a very nice, useful friendship and a very nice pleasure friendship. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, you could think, oh, well, if we had this every day, um, we we're always together. This is going to be an awesome life. Um, well, what I mean by deep friendship is you you love the other person for who they really are. You've 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 not just fallen in love with them on the surface. You've fallen in love with their being and their life. Uh, maybe not fallen in love, you love their very mm -hmm. being in their life. You want them to flourish in the truth. It's quite important. I mean, the, the closer both of you have to the same idea of the truth can also be very helpful because if you've got completely opposite ideas of the truth, there's going to be a lot of friction there to want the right thing for the person. But, but basically, some marriages do fall apart after a year or not last very long. It's quite startling how short some are. And I think any any marriage that falls apart that quickly has probably not found a deep friendship before that time, and, um, and because because the other friendships are always shorter lived, and you move on to other people, other people become more useful, more pleasurable, and and uh, taste change and all of that, and um, also you you get your first tragedy together. It's going to be a real test. Mm -hmm. You might have a miscarriage, you might have a handicapped child, you might have a job loss, you might have, you know, lots and lots of things can go wrong. Sickness, um, you know, I, oh, uh, yeah, why not get personal? Um, so uh, a boxer friend of mine has uh, had a stroke the week after he got engaged. Oh, and wow. I, he's, he's doing well, he's coming back well. But I saw him with his fiance, and I said to her, first thing I said to her was, Oh, yeah, for better or for worse, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, bad taste, real bad taste. <laughs> but uh, she was like, yeah, I reckon. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, there'll be a good test. It's always yeah, a good yeah. test. But um, basically, um, you, can't, you can't have a 
long-lasting, decent marriage without without deep friendship. It doesn't mean you need to have everything sorted on day one, but I think you see it with couples that where, where it really works. Mm-hmm. They do love each other more and more as time goes by, which is part of the dynamic of, of that kind of friendship. Um, they are very at home with each other. They've had a shared life. They, they, they have had often a common investment in the children and seen them grow up. And, but as you see in, the, in, in some very lovely old couples are the signs of, of, of a real life, lifelong friendship. That's why the, the thing about death at the end of it is such a tragedy. It's become so personal. It's become so particular, the love. Mm-hmm. No one can replace that person... And it's unthinkable that they would one day die. And and death is actually a very interesting topic. We could we could speak yeah, another, a long time, but um, because it's a rupture in friendship yeah. that that shouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. And um, in fact, it's quite an interesting one because it. Some people are so scandalised by death, and even some religions or systems are that they end up denying everything. Atheism is one of those things that can't. And sometimes they're proud that they can handle death because they say, you know, we can just face that death's the end and that's it and we, mm-hmm. we're courageous enough to face it and you guys are so right. um, so, so cowardly that you make up a life after death, you know. Yeah. They're both like that. But underneath, um, the argument from evil is really an argument from being scandalised by things going wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Buddhism is in a similar boat. Um you know, they see um, suffering in the world and they go, oh, flip, this is just all too much. Yeah. Um, even friendship's going to come to an end with death. No matter what it is, death's going to ruin it. So let's work on not desiring. Let's work on not not having any hopes. Let's work on not having any disappointments. Let's work on having nirvana, nothing, mm-hmm. and no, no attachments. And, um, you know, rather than face the the tragedy of love that should have been forever being ruptured by death and 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 yet and yet you go to any funeral you hear what everybody's talking about um, it's the love that's the thing that's endured right through it's the love that's brought them all there it's the love they want to they want to live in and celebrate it's the love the lack of the exercise of the love they're mourning and the presence of the loved one um, and yet it opens up in us this desire that mm-hmm. when we're not made for a sh- uh, you know, short-term love. We're made for a permanent love, and uh, I think it's one way that God actually attracts us to Himself. That no one human can ever satisfy our need for love, but He opens up the, He opens so, up the, you know, the whole. He shows us what love is through mm-hmm. deep friendship, and then He's the only real deep friend that can take us past that so, rupture. So, would you say it's possible then for someone who is not a Christian? let's say they're atheist or yeah. they're, they're, they're Buddhist, would you say it's possible for them to have a deep friendship? Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's possible for, in, oh well, in as much as you're, put it this way, in as much as anyone's a human, they can have a deep friendship. Mm-hmm. They could they could believe in a system that will get in the way of their deep friendship. Mm-hmm. I think Buddhism gets in the way of deep friendship as a system because it, it, it confuses selfish attachment and unselfish attachment. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it, it doesn't let you um, be fully in, a, in the desire of union. Um, you know, their, 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 their high point is harmony. It's, 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 and it's compassion. It's not love. And it's an interesting thing because sometimes people think they're the same thing. I remember once I, I was on an aeroplane with two people from one of those... Um, Baha'i sort of centres mm-hmm. where they write the pamphlet and they're coming back from Mount Carmel or wherever they do it. Yeah. And they were telling me, um, oh, you know, um, our religion, you know, it's to get all the religions into one religion. And I said, oh, you've mixed it up with Catholicism. That's, <laughs> that's the job of the church. You've just added one more that we have to bring in. Right. <laughs> and that, anyway, but I was, you know, just having a lighthearted conversation and, and then they said, um, uh, oh, they, they, they were just going on their honeymoon, they just got married, it was all wonderful. And then they showed me their pamphlet about life that they'd produced. And it said, you know, tolerance and compassion. And they said, um, these are the two main pillars of everything, tolerance and compassion, you know. Um, um, and I said, oh, what about love? And they said, oh, if you think about it, uh, you know, love, love is, love is um, 
uh, summed up by, you know, tolerance and compassion. Love is, tolerance and compassion, you know, sum up everything. So I said, so did you guys get married out of tolerance or out of compassion? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> does that answer any question? Or that, I just wanted to say that probably. No, that was... But there it is. Yep. Um, what, what did you ask? Well, yeah, well, I, I, was, I was in... Can you know atheists and stuff still experience oh, yes, that yes. same? Oh yes, yes. So, so, so I think yeah, because because friendship, even if you look at um, Aristotle's analysis mm. of friendship, mm-hmm. he's not coming from a Christian point no. of view. He 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 he's just coming from observing life. Um, we're all made, um, and it, well, we're all made the same way, and our hearts are gonna want something more permanent than just um, passing. Pleasures, passing, usefulness. Yeah. Um, we we know everybody knows that love is the ultimate thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I think the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Uh, it's it's yeah. Like I say, it's if the system you've got works against it, then you've got to fight that. Yeah. But so like like for example, I mean, no offense to um, your wonderful Protestant listeners. But let's imagine that you really believed that um, all you need is faith and it doesn't matter about works, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, they say they believe it, but if, if they started acting like they believed it, they'd be horrible people. Mm-hmm. Mm. And um, and um, so you, you got to look at your system and go, if I really followed this, would I, be a, would I be a great saint or would I actually be a terrible person, you know? Like, people can criticise Catholics right through history, but they're usually criticising them for not following the, the yeah, own what teachings. Saying, yeah. Or if you, whereas if you followed the Quran by the letter just to get you guys killed, <laughs> um, or me... Um, that's, you that's know, I think some, you'd have good days and you'd have some pretty damn terrible days. <laughs> but anyway, carry on. Oh, just <laughs> coming back, coming back to marriage. Like that's what I love about the vows that we have as Catholics, because they fully acknowledge sort of all the romance of it. That you know, it is love, and it is like a very close expression of sort of God's love for us. Like He gives us a foretaste of heaven in that marital mm. union. But then it also acknowledges is that you're you're together now, but you're still going to be facing all the tragedy of the world. Mm. You're going to be facing each other, which is also no easy thing mm. to really come come to know this person fully and all their weaknesses and all their faults, mm. as well as the good things about them. That's right. There's a lot of courage needed. Uh, like you need courage together to face the outside obstacles, but you also need the courage to be, like you say, to be vulnerable to each other, to be open, to be forgiving. Forgiving takes a lot of courage mm. um, to restore something that really you've been hurt and the rupturing of it, you know. Um, to, to, to see past the immediate obstacle and to be gentle in mm-hmm. terms of... Um, to see the to see where we're all lead where we're being called to rather than where we are right now mm-hmm. that 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 the obstacle in front of us isn't the end um so obviously there is a question about about um there is a question about grace underneath i suppose mm-hmm. um, when it comes to marriage in particular um to to have your marriage as a sacrament of Christ in the church is a completely mm. different thing than to just try to live a natural marriage well. Mm-hmm. Right. You, there is such a thing as a natural marriage, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you only have a sacramental marriage between two Christians. But, um, my, and so even my own mum and dad didn't have a sacramental marriage because my mum's Christian, but my dad's not. Mm-hmm. Um and um, obviously, my mum's prayed for him every day, and she's she's calling on grace all the time. She's going mm-hmm. to mass all the time, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, to be able to for both of you to know that that that, that um, well, it's like all of us have to know that that Christ on the cross is actually taking up all of our struggles, all of our mm-hmm. wounds, all of our um, failures and sins, everything. And and in a very personal way, he's redeeming us. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. so when we're in the middle of those things, when we find union with them by uniting with them in them and offering, we find a strength that we're never going to find by ourselves to get through anything. And if the whole, if the couple can unite in that uh, through any tragedy and know that well, maybe by human strength you can't get through some tragedies, mm-hmm. but with God all things are possible. Um, yeah, that's very true. Yeah. And recognizing the fact that Christ died and grieved over every one of your grievances and sins as yeah. well is uh, something we don't often think about. Yeah. But it's like He actually 
fully understands. All he that. is, and he's yeah. been to the bottom. He he doesn't he doesn't he's not like there's different ways to give charity. You know, you, you can walk outside McDonald's late at night and see a poor fellow outside and go, oh, hang on a minute, and get him a cheeseburger. I mean, yeah. if he's lucky, you might get a, a quarter pounder <laughs> and a little pat on the head and yeah. a, and a go go mate bye. Yeah, or, or you can. Or you can at least sit down next to him and um, and uh, you know get to know the the poor fella. I mean, just give him the burger as well. I don't don't think it makes up for it. It's cheapskate, you know. Give him the yeah. burger, but <laughs> spend some time. Yeah. I mean, Christ Christ always meets us. He he sort of picks us up from underneath when when it comes to our uh, woundedness. He's mm-hmm. he's been more wounded than I'll ever be. Yeah. And and he's and he's coming. Yeah, he's, he, he descended lower than any of us are going to descend to pick us all up and lift us up again. So, um, yeah, that's something amazing that we don't always remember when we're yeah. in the middle of yeah. stubbing our toes because thinking that's the worst thing in the world. Even thinking about true friendship, like we often talk, because true friendship is a bit more of a choice in the sense that you're not spending all your time with this person. You're, you're able to kind of have more of the good than the bad. But then the true friendship within marriage, you've obviously got that sort of base friendship and then there's all these other extra dimensions that you're having to deal with together. So yep. how, how, how does that friendship, or it'll obviously be deeper than a lot than all your other friendships, but it also has all these added struggles to it. Yeah, well, I think I think well, the, the thing with marriage, uh, I guess I guess the thing with deep friendship is it, it's not, it doesn't have to be um, a marital thing. It, it it can you can have deep friendship between two monks in a monastery. You can have deep friendship between two truth seekers that have always tried to understand life, and and they help each other and their friends down the road. You can have deep friendship between any gender, you know. Mm-hmm. So um so like. Does it change when you enter marriage, though? So, with marriage, it's got a whole other dimension. That's not just that's not just friendship, mm-hmm. which is basically that you're going to give yourselves bodily as well mm-hmm. in this exclusive exclusivity of of um, um, open to life mm-hmm. that that calls by its very nature to be exclusive, mm-hmm. and it introduces all sorts of things that aren't there in in other. You could say deep friendships. Yeah. Um, like, for example, jealousy. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be jealous in marriage. There's a healthy jealousy. Mm-hmm. There's an unhealthy jealousy. Unhealthy jealousy is when you get sad that somebody does well. Yeah. You know, because it wasn't me. That's that's a horrible thing. But there's a healthy jealousy where whereby you're guarding the precious thing and you don't want it ruined and you don't want it spoiled in the telling and you don't want it spoiled in, in the sharing in, in mm-hmm. with other people that where, where it doesn't belong. And um, and that's from the bodily dimension of that marriage brings in. If there weren't that bodily dimension, if marriage was just like two philosophers, then you could have marriage between yeah. two guys or whatever the thing is. Yeah. Um, you could have any kind of marriage, in it, but you're just sitting around just looking at the truth together. Mm-hmm. Some nice friendship, you could say. But the minute you're in, you're in um, the whole bodily exchange of 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 of, of love in that way, you're 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 in God's plan for life. You're in you're in, um, and 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 anybody can tell, even with from natural law, when you look at a, a human baby, it's not like a. Mm. What a dog! How long does a dog need before it's running around all by itself and doing its own thing? Yeah. Six weeks, mm. two months? I don't know. A few months. Mm-hmm. We, we we take about twenty years, <laughs> and even then, we half the time don't make our beds. <laughs> like just to get <laughs> going, you know. Your wife there's a long you. time there, and, and there's a long time we don't have our own prudence. We don't have our own decision making faculties. Yeah, we can't fend for ourselves, and and it calls for this this union. We're being brought up not just as an animal to survive. We're being brought up as a person to make intelligent, good judgments, prudential decisions, and basically forming these deep relationships. And 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 so um, yeah, the family demands that even at the natural level. And then of course it's always been God's yeah. plan that way. And um, and then Christ in the church shows it in a whole other dimension. <laughs> Yeah, man, the family is such a deep topic there. Yeah. I guess the question we were trying to get to, Robert, would you argue that there, outside of sort of the bodily exchange, that there is no other exclusivity? Or like, a- is there a certain, like we talked a bit about like your physical intimacy, is there a certain extra spiritual intimacy 
within Ooh. marriage, or is that one of those? Is that would you no, say? Would you say that? Well, deep, I think yeah. I think I think the spiritual side of it. I I'm don't. I mean, I can't know this, but <laughs> let me just talk off the top of my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the spiritual side. Well, we mustn't split them too much because it's not. When I say the bodily exchange, yeah. it sounds weird. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. um, um, I'm saying. Because we're an incarnated thing, right? We've yep. got a soul and a body. But in the case of marriage, through your body, you're expressing the love of your soul. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, what we're really talking about is self-gift. True love. Self-gift completely. Um, open to a new life. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, in sexual love. So that, so that, that, that thing demands exclusivity. I don't think there's a special spiritual thing that comes about because you're married mm-hmm. as such. Uh, like as in, as in, because when we say spiritual, we don't mean religious or anything like that. We just mean our intellect, our will, um, our, our capacity for truth and our capacity for love. Yeah, I mean, the bond is more than in just pure friendship because it's um, the bond of that full gift of self through the body. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. yeah I, I, I mean, we can't underestimate the friendship between that is possible between any holy people. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> I think like Mother Teresa would have had, um, Let's say, let's say her and well, it depends. If her and John Paul II had hung out a lot more, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, they may well have had the most incredible spiritual friendship, yeah, more than a lot of husbands and wives, mm-hmm. right? Without any thought of yeah. being husband and wife, yeah. Um, uh, Francis and Claire, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think, I think it's, I think that dimension of the friendship doesn't have, but the the, the advantage of the couple that are married. Is they live in the same room, even in the same house for ages, in the same room. They have the commonality of their children. They're invested in the daily project together. Mm, um, yeah. And yet, lots of couples don't live that very closely. Lots of couples are saying, "He's never home." Yeah. Um, you know, uh, oh, you know, he's just watching TV or drinking out there, and blah blah. You know. And they're, and they're craving an intimacy that you would imagine that they would have all the time. Right. Yeah. But but um, so, however, the situation is much more conducive to shared life when you're married yeah. than just um, if you live down the road from each other and you get together to to um, study virtue. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess one sort of kind of uh, aspect that I've been thinking about yeah. is like, let's say that you're not married yet. Um, would it ever get to a, so obviously like you know when, when you're not married mm. there's physical boundaries that we, mm. that we wouldn't go to from a, from a Christian yep. perspective you wouldn't go right. um, go close to the boundaries but let's say is there is there kind of boundaries there spiritually because for example or, or more emotionally even well yeah well but is it in sort of sense the same because let's say would it be wrong to or not wrong but could it could it is there a certain point you could get to where, let's say, you're praying the rosary together and holding hands? Let's just say. Are you talking, about, that, are you talking about dating? Well, this, this is just. I'm just saying. Is there what we're talking about? Is there a difference that changes once we're married, or how does how do how does that kind of develop? Because let's say, let's just mm. say, as an example, yes. you're holding ha- you're, you're dating, and okay. you're holding hands while praying the rosary. There's a certain way that that can spiritually bind you together in a certain way. Is it wrong? <laughs> or is it a is this it a isn't going to lead to the whole how far can we go thing? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. <laughs> it's just a, that's what everyone used to ask yeah. when I was young. Um, <laughs> we'll do another or, podcast. Yeah, it's another podcast. Yeah, yeah, Look, yeah. Doctor yeah. Love is here to stay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, but it's, I, it's I think a, there's a two ways that. to hold hands. Eh? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you can hold hands because you're so totally mm. at peace with each other, mm-hmm. and it's lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, or you can hold hands wishing that you could keep squeezing the way and moving your hand <laughs> yeah, around yeah. And, and maybe you could hold other things. <laughs> but yeah. that would be like different motives. Uh-huh. But um, <laughs> but um, no, I think... Yeah, okay, so so you're really talking about dating, aren't you? Because um, I was just thinking outside of marriage, I was just thinking like could be mm. any two friends yeah, yeah, praying yeah, the right, rosary. Yeah. Right. But the, no, we, we, we wouldn't will. necessarily hold hands with your yeah. mate saying <laughs> the rosary. 
<laughs> but you might if you were French. Well, that's you know? a good example. Or, um, but... Well, I went over to France for the first time and then, uh, then around Europe and, and uh, over to Israel and that. <laughs> and they're holding hands. Well, well, the first thing I thought was, oh, I shouldn't. I like, can, I, can I speak freely? Yeah, yeah you can speak. I thought they were all gay. But um, <laughs> we weren't gay. They were teenagers that, 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 that put their arms around each other a lot more than Kiwi guys uh-huh. would. Um, some even sit on each other's knee. It's just like they're leaning on each other. They're like they're like patting each other. They're doing a lot more touching than we, oh, than yeah. we ever Fair do. You know? But they, but that's why they're not so good at rugby, I guess. Because mm. <laughs> um, well, I mean, rugby's not. Rugby is anything we do, but they also do a lot of uh, camaraderie uh, touching. Um, uh, then you see um, other cultures where there's um, very tender sort of, you know, look at an Italian dad with his little baby yeah. and a little, little two-year-old. Mm. He's very, he's very uh, warm compared to the, to the awkward Kiwi dad who uh, right. wonders, oh, shall I just give him a sip of beer? Is he ready for that? Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah. we're a bit one-dimensional here, mm-hmm. but that's another thing. But um, um, <laughs> um, so 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 yeah. I'm trying to get back to your question, which wasn't really about that. It's, <laughs> what are you saying? Because um, you can have a deep friendship, well, man, you, a, man you... a boy, a man, a, 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 let's say, boy and a girl, mm-hmm. man and a woman. They don't have to be romantically interested in each other no. to have a deep friendship. Yeah, no, exactly. They can have a deep friendship. Yeah. You have to be careful when you're getting very close to someone who's married to someone else mm-hmm. and that it's not getting confused with mm-hmm. um, romantic feelings or idealising or all those different things. But there can be still very good friendships mm-hmm. between people. But but the, part of respecting the marriage is also respecting a kind of boundary. Yeah, yeah that you wouldn't want to even make it look like it might be going the wrong way yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't quite know if I'm answering your yeah. question. Probably um, not. I guess, could, could you could you unhealthily bind yourself together kind of spiritually, not Defin- physically, well, but could. for your marriage, let's say? Any, um, any, anybody could do that yeah. of, 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 any, of any gender as well. That mm-hmm. can happen in, like, dependent friendships, yeah. what, as mm-hmm. they say. Um, people who... Who are coming? It's really, it's really when it coming too much from your lack or your um, woundedness, your 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 problem. Say you have. I mean, I think everybody's got some sort of problem or some sort of unwholeness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But and if you, the yeah. unwholeness of two different people kind of is connecting them like a jigsaw. Mm-hmm. Is that the right word? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like the pieces fit. Yeah, but somehow they're really just. Um, festering in each other's wounds. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's just get back to Aristotle. That the friendship is is with the third person, which is God. It's not in reality. The deep friendship isn't like almost between you. It's between you and the thing that you're aiming towards, and that those, those higher goods that are present. Whoa. whoa. Um. <laughs> Hold like on. the jigsaw, it's just to oh, make oh, two people. Are you people. saying when you when you're in that situation? Yeah, 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 oh, sorry, yeah, I thought yeah. you meant normally. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> well, like, it's just like the jigsaw analogy. Those two people are going straight to each other as opposed to Oh, no, to no, going no, that's God. okay. Yeah, no, yeah, I don't yeah. think that's quite the distinction. Okay. So, I, I don't think because um, in, in, in real friendship, it's always, it's, it's the other one you do love. It's not just, it's not just we love God together. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, right. It is actually the, because what, what, you have to be careful not to be misunderstood these days because when, when you say you get attracted by someone, we start immediately thinking romantic, sexual, whatever. Mm-hmm. We don't think, even though just, I, I, love, I love that guy's sense of humour. That's attract, attractive, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that person's generosity is attractive. That person's honesty and their integrity is attractive, you know. We, we get attracted by virtue. We get attracted by... by um, well, sometimes by looks, but sometimes by class, sometimes by ability. Character. We can go, oh, that person's so... I just love listening to them. They're very, you know, whatever. Um, you know, so you've got, you've, got, you've got lots of reasons to be attracted because it's all different levels of goodness that attract us. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Um, oh, I'm getting lost. What, what, what? No, that's a real good catch, Robert. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so, so yeah. in fact, you, you, are, you are loving that person... 
for different at different levels, even in the useful friendship, you want to be useful for that person, not just I want to be useful because God wants me to, mm-hmm. or or pleasurable for that person. And when it goes deeper, I want the good for you for who you really are. But when you know God, you, that, then that's included in that yeah, good yeah. you want for them. Because if if they're not if they're not going to know God, they're going to miss the ultimate good. So that's where that's where. Um, to truth seekers go further in deep friendship because they're, they're also looking for what will fulfill their life beyond each other. Um, but that doesn't mean they miss each other. They love each other and, and they help each other in a higher thing as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so you do love your friend. Yeah. It's funny because there's two different ways to, to look there. Christian charity is different. Christian charity is when the, your friend is Jesus Christ and because he wants to be or is deep friends with somebody else because mm. he wants to be with everyone on earth mm-hmm. and he is with certain ones who have let mm-hmm. him in mm-hmm. and he still wants to be for all the others. So everybody that God sees is a potential friend of his or an actual friend of his, right? And so when, we, when he becomes our best friend, then this this actually even happens between human friends. When you're really close to someone, you start to care about what they care about. And it's, it's, it's not 100% because people have lots of different loves and you might not have, take on all their loves, but you do. You take much more interest in what they really care about. You see it with husbands and wives who are quite different. They get married and then the wife will take a real interest in what the husband's really into at yeah. some, you know, more and more or vice versa. Mm-hmm. Or especially when that thing's getting damaged or hurt and they're like, oh, Flip, I'll help you with that. But they didn't yeah. used to care about that thing at all. It's yeah, Because yeah. of that person, they're mm-hmm. caring about it. Even you see it with, um, you see it with, um, you know, say you've got a great friend overseas and then you come back home and then they just tell you, oh, my cousin's coming over. Um, oh, sure, yeah, I'll take them out. You, you end up, you know, you end up taking a few days off work and you take them around the mountains and you show them Hamner and you do different things. And you wouldn't, you know, you're doing all these things for this person. You don't know them. Yeah. You're doing it for the sake of the friend mm-hmm. who loves them. And they say, oh, you love this person. You know, you get on. Oh, oh, I've got this contact. You could stay with them. Right. And you're treating them like family because you love this other person. Yeah. That's that's a kind of paradigm of Christian charity and Aquinas even and that, uses it. Yeah, that like, opens up like kind of a whole other aspect actually. I hadn't really mm. thought about too much where it's like, well, deep friendship with other humans, but then what does deep friendship with Christ look like? Yeah, that's yeah, a whole yeah. other like aspect. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if you want to just touch on that briefly well, that's now. The, that is the essence of charity. So, so when Thomas Aquinas goes to explain the virtual charity, it, he does it all from Aristotle's friendship paradigm. Uh-huh. You want the good for each other. Um, not and not just useful, although we do want to be useful to God, and 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 you could say God's useful to us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lucky helps us, yeah, yeah. sustains us. He does everything for us. He's pleasurable for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not our motivation. Um, what can I get out of God, and how much am I going to feel Him? You know, um, if they if the, if we never go past that, we're, we're we're usually stuck in our spiritual life because we get scandalised when something goes wrong. Because why hasn't God helped us? Mm-hmm. Or we we wonder why mm-hmm. when our prayer is dry now when it used to feel nice, and we're judging our prayer on on whether we whether we're basking in the fire of God's love. Yeah, or not, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know. But when we're loving God for who He is, sometimes we'll feel it, sometimes we won't. But anyway, that's another point. But um, <clears throat> yeah. So basically, um. You love you love Christ, and then you find out Christ has a heart for the rich, which is what actually mercy means. Mm-hmm. Mis- misericordia, cordia is the heart. Cardiac arrest, cordiac mm-hmm. arrest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> misere, the rich. Mm-hmm. Right. Christ has a heart for the rich, and then suddenly you've got a heart for the rich. Why? Not just because richness attracts you, which it doesn't, but that guy is attracts mm-hmm. Christ, mm-hmm. And, and I want to be Christ's friend. And you can't really be the friend of someone and hate who they love. Like, right. You know, you can't go to someone's wedding and say, oh, I'm here to support you, but I hate the woman you've married. Yeah, yeah. You know, you won't be best friends for long. No. You know, uh, are you, would you be my best man? Yeah, but I hate, I hate, I hate her. She's getting in the way of us, guy. Yeah. Um, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's always a bit weird. <laughs> Anyway, so so, so yeah, there, there's an overflow. The, the thing about spiritual friendship is uh, spiritual or deep or whatever you want to la- label it. It doesn't have a built-in exclusivity around the spiritual part mm-hmm. in that you can be very deep friends with someone and someone else 
and someone else. You mm-hmm. could have three, mm-hmm. four, and you're not jealous of each other. And you're never jealous when your best friend in that way yeah. makes another really, really good friend. Mm-hmm. If you find yourself slightly jealous, and we often do, mm-hmm. it's because we're actually being quite a little bit possessive in our love. We're being a little bit passional in our love. And, and, and we're actually wanting to hold on for me what I'm, you know, oh, no, mm-hmm. this person's come on the scene. Ah. Oh, I'm not going to be able to do this or that, uh, you know. But then when you put that in like a marital context, like you are saying before, mm. it's different. It is a bit different because because of the exclusivity that is absolutely called for yeah. when, you, when you really lay yourself open and say, I'm giving my whole self to you, body, soul, mm-hmm. uh, for the rest of my life, and it's exclusively yeah, mutual. Yeah. Um, yeah, you have to watch that. But mm-hmm. you're not jealous of, of your wife making and having a great friend from even childhood and still having that person as a great friend. You're mm-hmm. not jealous of that person. Right. You might say, don't invite her around every bloody night because <laughs> she's a bloody... I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, yeah. people moan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But underneath, you're glad she's got a great friend. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and that should be something you can rejoice in because actual spiritual friendship naturally opens outward and has mm. fruit beyond. Yep. Even in a family... Like, um, so the fruit, obviously a husband and wife fruit in the family, the kids. Yeah. But there's a whole proper thing about good couples and good families that they radiate outward charity to others, to their neighbours. They become a welcoming place that people can come mm. to. They become a place people can lean on each other for support, you know. And we, I think we even pray it. I can't remember the exact prayers in the marriage, but... You, you, when you're praying for the couple and that, you, you always pray for them to be open to life mm-hmm. and have lots of kids. Well, as many as God wants. Mm-hmm. But you're also praying for them to be generous. Um, you know, I don't know, I can't remember how it's actually put, but, but the the implication is generous neighbours, yeah. you know, generous hosts, um, a, a place where people can find abundance and life and love. Yeah. And, 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 but obviously, prudence has to be there. Mm-hmm. It can't. Some people have grown up in a house where, where mum and dad are always looking out for stragglers and strays, and there's a heap of people they befriend that are a little bit unlikely, but mm-hmm. they become part of the family for a while and move on in different ways. But it's always got to be done with huge prudence because mm-hmm. um, yeah. you can't have someone in the house that's dangerous to your children. You can't have someone in the house that's undermining your relationships. But if you're stable and good in those and then then you often can accommodate somebody that's a bit broken and wounded for a while, not necessarily living with you, but maybe, but, you know, um, because it's not a threat to anybody, there's a stable hub of love that can mm-hmm. heal, help heal that person. You have the overflow of love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I think that happens whether it's exclusive marital yeah, yeah. or should we say just friendship friendship what about when um so you're married and you have children so obviously as the children grow up that friendship that that is going to develop what is that kind of can you have deep friendship with young children or is that oh that's is, such a good question no <laughs> <laughs> well the well put it this way you you grow into friendship with your children um it doesn't start as friendship there are there are plenty of parents that call their little wee boy or girl, you know, little boy mate. Hey, yeah. mate. Uh-huh. Always sounds a bit wrong, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's, that's just a term of endearment. Mm-hmm. But but basically, you are the prudence for your children. Yeah. When they're really young, and you're meant to be, and and you're and part of bringing them up is teaching them to get their own prudence so they can make their own judgments. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, you're also preparing them for friendships because you, if you think about your own life, and Aristotle says, um, without friends, no one would choose to live even if he had all other goods. Mm-hmm. So so you don't Dang, want your... That's a good one. Yeah, you don't want your kids to have no friends. Yeah. You want your kids to have friends and mm-hmm. ultimately you want them to have a deep relationship, hopefully with one person or or... At least, say, well, if they go into a religious community, yeah. to be able to form good, lasting friendships, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, and, and it does happen that they'll form a friendship 
with you as a parent. When you've finished being there, prudence, I would say. Yeah. Um, so, so, and so, it's starting. I mean, you, uh, that's not denying love. Love isn't love is yeah. there from the yeah, beginning. Yeah, of the kids responding in an imperfect way as they're learning mm-hmm. how to love. The parents pouring out their full mature love, and um, that's teaching the kid how to love. And, 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 and the kids delighting them by small reci- reciprocity, yeah. even the first smile is an amazing mm-hmm. or whatever it is, you know. Um, little wee cards and little little attempts and little every every little thing to cheer up mum or whatever. It's beautiful, right? Yeah. Um, a touching and everything. But as it, as it, as it, hopefully, by the time that person's an adult, yeah, you hear the, you hear people say, well, my mum's my, my best friend or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite a lovely thing. Mm-hmm. Um it's it's where it's where they move from being our prudence to being our counsel. You could say you still listen to them because hopefully there's wisdom from experience and age and, mm-hmm. and good decisions. But um, they're not. You're under no obedience anymore. Mm-hmm. Because you've got to have your own prudence. It's wrong for you to just say, I'll just see if mum and dad say yes, yeah. fine, when you're 27 or something. Yeah. You know, It shouldn't be that way. Uh, it might have to be for some people. Like if you if you actually don't have the ability to make yeah. a decision, Aquinas says God gives you kind of the minimum prudence to know when you don't have any prudence. So that you <laughs> yeah, do just yeah. go to someone with prudence and yeah. say, will you decide? Mm-hmm. And that's better than mm-hmm. not having that much prudence to ask them. But I mean, yeah, ideally... The um, the if and and this is where parents have to learn to let go. And the hardest thing is this judging the right way and the right amount to let go because it's always bit by bit during the teenage years and a bit beyond, so that they're not still smothering them as if they were ten, but neither are they just cutting them loose, letting them loose to fall everywhere. Yeah without caring but you know it's a very hard thing and it's, it's usually people find it especially hard with their oldest one because they don't know how to let go to the old, of the oldest one then by the time the youngest one comes along they seem to get away with everything oh, yeah? yeah classic <laughs> <laughs> yep but um, number ones here on yeah. the box <laughs> but it isn't yeah it's also not just handing uh, uh, them over to themselves it's also handing them over to God when you've got faith um, I remember a priest, uh, old sardonic, wonderful guy, like those kind of homilies that were great on everyone, but I love them. Uh-huh. And, and he got up one time and he said, American guy, he said, um, I get these women coming to me in confession and then they say, and I thought, oh, don't tell us what they say, but he didn't tell us since he just said, uh, <laughs> you know, they say, oh, my, my, my Johnny's... Um, you know, he's gone off into a life of drugs and this and that and he's lost and blah, blah, and I don't know what to do and everything. And I, and I like to give them this piece of advice that, that, that they find very consoling. I say, there's only one mother of God, honey, and you're not it. <laughs> and they find that very consoling. And and then, and then I say, you know, you've done something. Mary's really pleased with you. You've done something she can't do. You birthed your children into sin. <laughs> and then he goes, now, let her birth them into God. Hand mm. them over to her. She'll birth them into God. Hand them over. You know, and it's not, it's not, that, that can sound very wrong, that sermon, but... I think there's a real wisdom in that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's sure. an important point. The only friendship men should have with the opposite sex is with Mary, the mother of God. So, <laughs> <Is it there? laughs> I just made it up. Oh, wow. It's a good, it's a good yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, it's a new good heresy line. on the way. <laughs> <laughs> a new heresy is born on, on the... On the we, what was this podcast called? Fit for the Kingdom. Fit for the Kingdom. Which kingdom? <laughs> Which kingdom, kingdom of God, hopefully. Anyway, no. Well, uh, but mind you, can't go wrong with the mother of God. No. I'm yeah. telling that to all you Protestants. To your protector. Today's actually, the feast of Cyril of Alexandria. Oh, actually, we're not one with whom they're listening, but it is today. Um, the great defender of Mary, Mother of God, mm-hmm. Theotokos. We actually forgot to start with a Hail Mary. Oh, it's pretty yeah. shocking. No wonder this whole thing's shocking falling apart. Oh, yeah. no, no. <laughs> well, let's <laughs> start <laughs> again. Yeah. Yeah. What should we talk about? <laughs> let's do a Hail Mary now. Yeah, absolutely. All right. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Well, there's Mary and Joseph. Now, that, they, 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 they have an exclusivity, but they don't have a bodily... Mm. Well, mind you, you can't. You can never draw too much from the exact... exact well, you can, but I mean, yeah. they're an yeah. exceptional marriage underneath, yeah. aren't they? I mean, let's not base the whole of marriage theology on, <laughs> yeah. on, yeah. A, on a virginal couple. <laughs> <laughs> but they do have the deepest friendship. Mm-hmm. Well, you know they must have had that. And 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 um, yeah, that's interesting. But um, and they do have marriage, truly married. Yeah, that's an, another interesting aspect there. We don't hear about that in the in the New Testament, though, do we? Their friendship, their marriage, not much. No, not a lot. Well, we see. Yeah, we just see those little moments of Joseph. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, yeah, but we see. Well, we do see him leading. We do see him. Hearing God, leading the family, we do see, we see them both confused at one point when Jesus has got lost, mm-hmm. but they're both trusting. Yeah, I don't know. Unless not, I'm not going to try and wing a well, theology I guess, off the top of my head. I guess kind of like <coughs> a, a final question. Yeah. Um. So so obviously Thomas was joking before, but yeah, just kind of in regards to what he was saying about um okay. when you're married and having yes. friendships with members of the opposite sex outside of marriage. So you were talking about, yep. yes, you can have deep friendships with as many as possible or as many, well, you know, well, it's, it's good to have deep usually friendships Usually there are a lot anyway because you've got to spend time with people. Yeah, that's true. And it has that's to true. be appropriate time. Yeah. 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 So I suppose um, you can have appropriate time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's obvious example would be you could have a deep friendship with your own mother, mm-hmm. a guy, yeah. and your wife. Mm-hmm. And no one's going to go, oh, dodgy. Yeah. Hopefully, but um, <laughs> yeah, you know, sure. watch it. Yeah, um, but that's your mum. Mm-hmm. But 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 um, yeah. The, the, there's no theoretical reason why you couldn't, as long as the way that you're spending time with people is the right and healthy, and good, and you know, proper way under God. But if you notice it becoming something else, that's where you've got to be able to. To get right away from it, yeah, and that's hard for people to judge. Yeah, they and having that aw- so having that awareness yeah, is because they often want a certain, they like the friendship, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. the, and and then the trouble is the the marriage or one at home might be yeah. getting f- going through a rough patch, and there's so many people have turned to someone else because oh he was so understanding when I told him about my awful husband. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, he's a jerk then. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> yeah, for being like, like you know, the danger's there yeah, anyway. Yeah, put it yeah. that way. But, 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 um, I, I wouldn't make a rule rule. I just think it's what we're really trying to do is mm-hmm. say prudence, uh, which has a bad rap, by the way. We'll have to talk about prudence another day because we have to understand what that really means. Yeah. It doesn't mean super carefulness, and it, and it certainly doesn't mean cowardly. I won't risk anything, mm-hmm. which is you know. Should we say classically what bishop's prudence has often turned out to be? <laughs> Not our bishop, but uh, I've heard overseas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I've um, but um, <laughs> we got a good bishop, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Love you, Bishop. We love you, Bishop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know that. Anyway, mm-hmm. he's not even listening. Oh, he probably is. He oh, might who, be. Knows? who knows? Yeah. Thank Hope you for listening, Bishop. Yeah. God willing. Keep keep listening, please, Bishop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God, I got distracted by that thought. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, prudence. Yeah. yeah. So basically, um, yeah, it's it's wisdom in the moment. It's wisdom and it's wisdom and seeing what's really going on. Um, I think we've got to be humble enough to listen to others too, because when an unhealthy friendship develops. Um, often the two people don't notice it, that it's unhealthy, but a lot of other people do. Mm-hmm. And they can go, oh, that's a little bit icky, a little bit wrong, there's something funny going on there. The, they seem like good friends, but actually you can see there's, there's a wrong dependence going on there and they might be cutting across their vocation or, or something yeah, like yeah. that. And and that's where a good friend might, you know, tell the other person, um, are you sure this is actually all all. Mm-hmm. What it seems, you know, um, it's hard for us to to correct our friends, but if it's an important thing, yeah. you know, it becomes really like a duty almost. Yeah. Mm. Uh, good stuff. And I think one final point 
Rob, you started the pod. You said that virtue leads to love. And I think... Oh, or even was just that before talk- we started? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And <laughs> even just that, talking about sort of our love between each other, that it's always going to be sort of regulated um, with virtue. Yeah, yeah. So there isn't any deep friendship without virtue. Uh, as in, you, you can want there to be. Like, everybody's got in their heart the desire to have a deep friend, I think. But um, what f- goes wrong is often so- someone feels betrayed, someone feels like they trusted that person and then it turned out, mm. you know, there's been dishonesty, there's been some sort of selfishness that was too surprising, there's been there's been cowardice when I thought they would stick up for me or vice versa. Um, uh, there's attachment to some material thing that's that's pulled them away, uh, even in an addictive way. You know, lots of things. Lower loves have got hold of things instead of higher loves. And and the more we, we get our loves in right order, the more we see what's really important and get our priorities right and all those things, the more we see that the person that we want the deep friendship with is actually more important than... Lots of secondary things that we used to think were really important. In fact, one of the signs of deep friendship is that the person takes on more and more importance, and lots of our things that in life that we regarded as our main thing are now relativized to that. Mm-hmm. So, um, I might have thought, oh, the main thing for me is you know, um, my my creativity and my music and my this and my that, and then you meet somebody that. Where where um, you realise if the choice came down to it, mm. I'd be you know yeah you're going to be happy uh, knowing this person for life than sitting in my room by myself yeah. playing the piano for life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Like a miserable Beethoven, well, he he failed in love, and he got kicked out of fifty one houses in Vienna. But what a wonderful man. Anyway. Well, Matt, do you have any final thought, thoughts before we give the final words to Dr. Love? Um, no, I think thank you very much for coming on. And, um, Pleasure. Yeah, no, it's, it's great to be able to have the discussion. And there were um, definitely just the, the things you're saying, like there's there's new questions that pop into my mind as we're talking, so it's good to be able to discuss them as well. And um, oh. Yeah, so no. Hard as West Auckland way of saying yes. Mm-hmm. We like that one. Hard, hard yeah. does, hard. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, all right, you, any, anything just to wrap up with? Oh, the best thing is we don't freak out too much that we don't have everything perfect. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Here's the, here's the gem. Um, <laughs> imperfection is a stepping stone on the way to perfection, mm-hmm. yeah? It's not something to dwell on the imperfection and go, oh, ruined it, mm-hmm. look at it, terrible. Right. I'm no good, I don't measure up, am I good enough yet? All that self-looking, we, we've got to look out from ourselves. Discover the goodness of the people around us. Discover what's really attractive in the people around us, which is their their natural goodness mm-hmm. and um, and their uniqueness. Discover the and be grateful for it and be in wonder about it. Mm-hmm. And 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 when we come out of ourselves, we come out of the that kind of self serving life into a life that's naturally looking outward. And we do discover there's all sorts of great people around us and great things. What wonder at the world. You know, it's one of those things that that I think um, our technological age kills is our wonder mm-hmm. at the real world and mm-hmm. and our real presence with each other. So, so that, yeah, I guess the real the real thing is rediscover the real presence of the real people in our midst yeah. and 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 look for their goodness and make don't friends. be put off by the by the first sight sight of an obstacle mm-hmm. or a limit. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Amen. Good. Righty, shall we consecrate this to Our Lady, give it to her, she can present it a, a bit better than we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Quick thanks to Malachi. Not a quick thanks, a long thanks for all the work he's doing. Yep. Uh, he put the man back into Manzi. He put the man back yeah, into Manzi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's putting the man back into the people, really. Yeah, with yeah, some yeah. Of his Amen, lyrics, so. Yeah. Keep up the good work. And yeah. watch out for a rap opera Cinderella coming your way in a year or two. <laughs> 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 yeah, and thank you everyone for listening as well. Um, you can you can go support us on our locals at fitforthekingdom.locals.com. It'd be awesome. We really appreciate all that. And follow us on um, our Instagram at fftkpod. Um, yep. And we've also got a website, k 
kingdomfitnz.com. An amazing website. Do check it out. You'll get all the good stuff there. Yeah, links to everything there. So Stay tuned for more pods with Dr. Love. We know Ooh. you love them. And um, yeah. We're only just starting. We're only just starting. We won't keep you much longer. <laughs> so pray hard and stay hard. God bless. God bless. Bye. From the FFDK crew. Levels everyone stuck on the ground floor See myself for five, but like down four Vision locked on course Boom boom, hit him with the cold evidence You know the flow is venomous, it's pretty evident Vroom vroom, drop by like the president Put you in retirement like you're David Letterman I'm full of adrenaline, lights off in my head again I'm bending all these beats and melodies A rare specimen, a real gentleman Keep it genuine, say what I know And keep that down low, low.